there's never been one of the outstanding traits of thrush. Uh, can you make it to that house? If you leave, I can collapse for a while. Only long enough to make a phone call, I'm afraid. Oh, you have a lot to say. One more thing, huh? Not a word from either one of you. I'll make all the explanations that are necessary. Be interesting to see how you get around these. Just keep holding hands and keep them out of sight. Agreed? Or would you prefer... Here we have a package that came via UPS. And it doesn't look too bad. Doesn't look like they've trashed it too bad. What this should be is an RCA CTC, no not CTC, CTC is color television chassis, KCS-136, which KCS was the RCA numbering system for black and white chassis. So this should be from the early 60s, I believe. And it has vertical trouble so let's see if it's in one piece all right well we have our prepaid return label here an undone crossword puzzle oh, a couple under oh, this might be that sudoku thing uh it's always interesting to see how stuff is packed Let me uh, do this off camera. I can't do this. Oh boy, when you said you recapped and you weren't joking. Your, your lead length is kind of long there, homie. You want to try, and I know this is not RF circuitry or anything, but you want to try and always minimize your lead length uh, as much as you can. Okay. Yeah, these, these do go bad. The red drops do go bad on the RCA stuff, so I, I realize that's the vertical board. Maybe that was your attempt to try and get full deflection. But um, anyway, uh, let me try and get this out of here and we'll have a detailed criticism fest. Why not? So, KCS-136 was a, a, a fairly common chassis. I, some other, some other people you, uh, videos you probably watch own these KCS 136 chassis sets too. This is a like a floor, usually it's a floor model console type black and white, I think a 20, 23 inch black and white set. Anyway, um, when the, this viewer that owns this contacted me you know, I, my first attempt was to try and walk him through it because, you know, I'm not a fan of shipping stuff and his, the, the expense for that or whatever for him. And then I said, well, you know, let me make sure that I have an RCA set that contains a, a KCS-136 before, we, before you ship it because I don't have a jig. So if I don't have a way to verify the repairs, then, you know, there's no, no reason to ship it. 
and it turns out I do have an RCA KCS 36 and after we get finished looking at this I will next part of the video will be uh, watching my KCS 36 um, so before before I pull the chassis out of my set and stick this one in it I probably should benchmark this before I do any attempt any repairs on it so let's let's uh, kind of take a look at this and the owner of this is kind of new to television so we're not going to criticize too bad we will we will correct um, cutting the capacitors off and soldering them onto the top like you see here this is the way the RCA service manual tells you to replace these parts if you look at the factory service manual not the SAMS they say if you find a bad part crush it crush the part with a pair of dykes fold it up and uh, do basically what he's done here attach the leads together now I don't do this I you know I've I've never I've never had a I've never personally had a problem desoldering and resoldering parts onto these boards but that's what the field service manual does tell you to do and this is what I told him to do as well as the farm radio chassis which I didn't have that good of luck with we had a delay line problem and he actually located the delay line after I sent it back to him, at least I believe he did. Um, but we straight kind of, you know, I verified the alignment on that one. Screw it down to a piece of uh, plywood, you know, before you ship it. Anyway, let me get this off here and let's have a look at the bottom. Okay, so this chassis, if I remember cor correctly, uses a voltage doubler circuit in the um, power supply. And right here would have been a cardboard covered cap isolated from the chassis. And then right here would have been the, the electrolytic can. Uh, Generally, I believe on mine I did have to change the voltage doubler circuit because it does run a lot of current through there. And um, it does burn those capacitors out. But generally in RCA, I'll have to say I had to change very few of the electrolytics. I know about the, the hyper hyperventilating that goes on if you don't change all the electrolytics and, and whatever. Uh, but... I've had pretty good uh, results uh, with not changing them. Now, also, I'm a big First Amendment guy when I let the, you know, when it comes to letting the free speech go on the, on, on the comments. But on this one, if you have negative comments about the work that this gentleman did on this chassis, keep them to yourself, please, because I will remove them. Um, we're not here to criticize another person's work. We're here to, to, to help a, a beginner, someone who's interested in vintage TV and, and wants to, you know, maybe get into it more. We don't want to discourage that. We want to encourage you know, uh, troubleshooting and and other skills like that. I, I know that this is this is uh, you know this is high risk right here. Um, so uh, 
you know, and this wouldn't probably never be a problem, you know. I mean, you just you put it back together and you put the chassis in the in the cabinet and as long as an earthquake or something doesn't hit, you're you're not going to uh you're never going to have a problem. You know, and it Another common problem with this type of stuff is when you get to working on on chassis like this, you need a big soldering iron. When you get get into soldering onto the steel, you need at least a hundred hundred and fifty watt iron, and you need flux, and you you need to clean it off. Uh, you need you know a thirty or forty watt soldering station. This is this is what you're going to get. Uh, you know, it's it's going to be a cold solder joint. It's just not going to stick unless you have um, the big guns. You know, he he probably tried to solder to that, and there was just no way he could heat that up. And that's that's fine. That's not a problem. We can we can show the proper tools that are needed to do that, and we can you know we can straighten this right out. We can pull this piece of wire off here. We can connect this one from there to over here on the board where it goes. This one, the same thing. It goes to the audio output tube there. We can solder it to here. Uh, this one here, same thing. It goes from the audio output tube to, to ground. So we can we can clean this up and, and make this uh, make this happy. You just need the I've never heard of these. Mike. M I E C. I've never heard of those. So that goes to ground and that. Okay, we got somebody here. Okay, we need some work there. Anyway, um, I believe the preferable method to go about this is to try and get this in my set and verify that the problem that he's experiencing, which he, he I believe he said that he could only get three, three inches of deflection in the middle of the screen, uh, that the problems that he was experience uh, in fact I can duplicate here so we'll just uh, we'll just uh, we'll just hope that uh, that holds together So this is a lot like a um, CTC chassis with the, the, the tube set up. Trying to remember how I did replace these on my set. I know that I just changed the two doubler sections and I believe that I used I had capacitors that were double the value, which it doesn't matter. You can use, if it calls for 
100 microfarad at 350 volt, two of them for the doubler. If you have two 470s or two 680s, it doesn't matter as long as they're the same. You don't, you don't get more voltage with a bigger capacitor. So it just, they need to be the same. So I, I forget what this called for and I forget how I did it on mine. I know I did a kind of a sloppy job on mine. I think I just glued them up underneath. But we'll have a look when we get that out. So, we could have a capacitor in the circuit here that's off by a factor of 10, or maybe he recapped it after the problem and the recapping didn't correct it. Or we could have one of these high value resistors like that red, red, green, I think that's a 2.2 meg. Then we got a brown, black, blue there. What's that 10 meg? We got a brown, uh, black, green, that's one meg. Got a 470 there, we got a 100K there. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's get into this. The next part of the video is going to be um, taking, taking a look and watching some, some of the uh, glorious, uplifting, intelligent programming on the DirecTV box. Come on, focus. Okay. This is my RCA KCS-136 and mine is a combo unit. A very low hour TV. Here's the uh, tuner. All tube. FM stereo which doesn't decode anymore of course. And it's got a record player up there in the top, which I don't think works, but I've got so much junk piled up on top of this, I use it like a workbench. The last time I used it, it worked. There's a plate missing there. Probably uh, for the UHF or something. The last time I used this, it had an excellent picture. It's been probably a couple years. So uh, we'll fire it up. And just get a, just watch some TV on it. It's the change.org petition urging Sony to release the film. Collins says today, independent and art house theaters were doing what they've always done. They're very committed to social justice issues, the freedom of speech and artistic expression. And Collins says the list of theaters showing the interview will grow. He stresses, even through all the back and forth over the film's release, these independent theater owners aren't upset with Sony. We're not mad at Sony. It's, it's a big and complicated world, uh, and, and people uh, do what they have to do what they need to do based on the information that they have. Jonathan Handel is an entertainment lawyer and a contributor to The Hollywood Reporter. Handel says today's news is good for Sony and for free speech, but it's not great financially because this release will still be small. It's seems like we're looking at something along the lines of 300 or so theaters, although, again, the situation is quite fluid, so we don't know for sure. Okay. Ooh. I hooked the direct TV box to it. It's identified as 86-year-old Antonia Yeager, the widow of former L.A. Superior Court Judge Thomas six years ago. Detectives say she was stabbed to death. She lived alone in this Spanish-style home that takes up a whole corner on Beechwood Drive. Neighbors, most who did not want to go on camera, say she was a nice lady who was often seen outside, running errands or feeding the local cat population. Area resident Beth Valander. And she has fed these cats for years in her backyard, and we always go visit them because she's got this sort of bunch of lovely trees there that Roscoe loves and we love, and it's horrible. News archives say her husband, Judge Yeager, became a controversial character back in 1965 when his first wife, a wealthy heiress 14 years his senior, after only four days of marriage, mysteriously disappeared on a yacht trip back from Catalina. And shortly before his retirement, the judge, using this same home as a headquarters, announced he was forming a new religion called the Community Betterment Service. Now, investigators, late into the afternoon, were still combing the grounds, looking for clues as to who may have murdered his second wife. Detectives say 
there are no signs of forced entry into the home. More than one resident told well, us this afternoon that there has been several... It's obvious this needs some capacitors. You probably can't hear it in the audio, but there is a very low 60 hertz buzz in it. This TV was always a buzzomatic discriminator. This thing was always, no matter how I aligned it or adjusted it, it was always that sizzling, could not deal with the high contrast, modern. December when we're talking 80s. Hello, if you're from out of town, uh, this is our normal weather around Christmas time. Not always, but most of the time it is, and that usually carries right into New Year's, and we start talking about the Rose Parade. All right, let's look at some uh, numbers at the 5 o'clock hour. 76 in Burbank, 73 Long Beach, 74 Ontario, 75 Riverside, 57 a little cooler up in the high desert there at Lancaster. Boy, we had some thick, dense fog around the Santa Monica Bay down towards the will reform tonight. I don't know if it'll be as thick, but we'll keep an eye. Uh, Southern San, jo uh, San Joaquin Valley, that Thule fog already in evidence around Bakersfield. So if you're heading north for Christmas, be advised of that as well. Well, we do have some high wind watches. Ventura, LA County, right on through. Look at how bright. Day, 3 thing will go so yep. bright. Our wind advisories, including the mountains, but some of the gusts going up over the I-5 in North LA County, Tomorrow night could reach 70 to 80 miles per hour. How's Santa going to do that in his sleigh? So, I mean, he must have a wind deflector on there or something. I just thought of that. I don't know. I have no idea. Oh, here we go. Let's get a few minutes of this. Auto Razor is a jigsaw, circular saw, band saw, tile saw, and hacksaw combined. Roto Razor cuts horizontally or vertically. It cuts in a straight line, along a curved line, or plunge cuts a corner on a dime. You can even cut with it upside down. With Roto Razor, you can rip it, cross cut it, miter it or trim it. Roto Razor cuts new tile like magic without cracking and removes old tile and grout in seconds. Inside is a 400 watt motor in a construction grade chassis that's durable, incredibly light and fits easily in the palm of any sized hand. There's a thumb control power switch on one side with a safety switch on the other that keeps the blade guard locked until you're ready to cut. And the blade guard adjusts so you can cut to the depth you want without damaging the surface below. And Roto Razor comes with three quick change razor sharp cutting blades. You get a tungsten carbide blade for wood, a high speed steel blade for metal, and a rock hard diamond blade for tile and stone. Whether you're a do it yourselfer or a professional contractor, if it's a home repair or a weekend woodworking project, if you're a tool guy cutting for a living or a first time user on an arts and crafts project, the Roto Razor is the fast and easy way to get the job. All right, here's my KCS 136. And this thing is uh, so low hour, it's got all the original tubes in it. What's, what's kind of bizarre is the horizontal phase detector selenium diode has been replaced with those two, like 1N917 or whatever, those little silicon signal diodes. This thing's actually got a factory RCA horizontal output tube in it. Uh, which is pretty amazing. I mean, that it means it's incredibly low hour. Um, hmm. All right, well, what I'm going to do, since this is a combo, you can see that it's got kind of some interesting speakers here. There's the amp right there with the for the... I guess it uses... It's two 6BQ5s, one's for, one for each channel. Here's the tuner assembly. Um, I'm going to very gently extract this chassis. Uh, so as not even to disturb the dust. You can see there the cardboard, original cardboard filter. So let me uh, extract this guy. Uh, you want to see how scared I am of the high voltage. 
Now keep in mind this set was just running. See that? Real deadly, isn't it? Um, okay. All right, extraction process. All right, here's my cap replacement job, and I remember where these came from now. They came out of the power supply on a flat screen, and like I said, they're supposed to be, I think, 150 UF, uh, 350 volt, and they're the ones I put in are 300 at 420 volt. Like I say, it doesn't it doesn't matter as long as they're the same the same basic size. Uh, it's it's more about them being equal and low enough ESR to where they'll double the voltage. Take a couple pictures here of what mine looks like. Uh, some video of this for my own reference. It's one easy, easy chassis to remove. It took about two minutes. All it has is the yoke, the yoke, the uh, CRT, and that's, and the audio. That's really it. All right. Let's put the other chassis in my set and see what we get. This should be scary. Alrighty, the chassis has been installed and be, uh, be real careful with this because I don't want to burn my burn my good CRT that would not make happy me for myself well Can we see what's happening here? Um, oh. Um, this is a bit scary. Let's see. Do we have anything red plating in here? Uh, is that horizontal output tube red plating? Let me check. Okay, it looks okay. supercharge the krill oil with the high omega-3 highly concentrated fish oil getting the whole thing up to a thousand milligrams of EPA and DHA so this krill omega-10 formula this is the evolution of my knobs are different let me figure this out percent fat by weight so that's more than half okay we got a major filtration issue here omega-3 that we get from fish oil and krill oil but, but wait a second here Mark we just said we're not getting close in to enough of this, this DHA from our diet anymore. We have a dramatic shortfall in omega-3. So now... I need a different infomercial. Mm -hmm. 
All right. So this is this is hum, 60 60 cycle hum, but it also looks like we got some vertical issues because the the well can't really tell because of. Got to get the filter straightened out first. So what I'm going to do tomorrow or whatever is I'm going to pull it back out and I'm going to go through and neaten up and verify that all of those caps are in correctly. Ooh, look at that boiling grease. Yummy. Here on my burner, it's a typical, you know, electric coil under here. I can see Johnny's been cooking over here. This is what happens. It's not safe. And not only is it not safe, I have no idea what the temperature is. I'm just getting Lubricate the insides. All right, day number two. Uh, today I'm going to go through and clean this up. Verify and solder all of these with the proper soldering equipment. And um, then we will put the chassis back in my set and test it. One thing that's nice about having the factory service manual is the numbers on the circuit boards match the numbers on the schematic, so it'll make it a lot easier in verifying part numbers. There's the proper soldering equipment to solder to a steel chassis. So uh, let's get going on this. All right, so we've got these soldered in here nice and securely soldered to the ground there and one of these is going to pin two of the audio output tube which which is a cathode bypass capacitor um, that 470 ohm then we got this one here which you can see this side here is ground. I cleaned out the holes. I fed it through the holes. Uh, that one I think was going to pin 8. I'm not sure I can show you. This one here is going from point P down here on the board to ground here. So we can take a look here, and actually that one was 0.6 to ground, and here's our cathode bypass, and then the one from point P, which is weird, they call this a 6HF8, and he's got a 6AW8 in there. Uh, point P right there is a 10 microfarad to ground kind of went overkill here with a 450 volt when this is only a 25 volt cap. Alright so these cleaning this thing up is next and a lot of this can be relocated to different parts of the chassis. For instance this wire here goes up to here goes to that tie point right there and this wire here comes over here to this tie point so we can just take and tie these two tie points together and then just drag the capacitor off of one of these maybe from here to here there's no reason for everything to be concentrated in this area anymore it's it's gone uh, beyond that Okay, I got that one moved over here, and I just removed that old splicer and attached it right to the width coil, so that one's solid. 
I have a feeling this was our problem right here. Uh, there should be two uh, 150, 150s at, well, I thought they were three, 350 volts. He's got 450s here. So these can get very confusing how these connect. And I, well, maybe that was soldered onto that right there. Uh... Huh. Okay. Um, let me try and try and solidify this doubler. See, this obviously comes from the power transformer. So one side does come from the power transformer through a circuit breaker or a fuse. Well, let's see. And it goes to the positive of one and the negative of another. So he's got it going to the negative of this one. confusing all right so this was the main ground for all of those filter capacitors and it's actually that lower bolt down there on the power transformer and if I'm not mistaken this is epoxy holding this this thing on here Like he couldn't get the solder to stick. So he just wrapped it around there and epoxied it on. All right, uh, I got to figure out how to, to position and locate these things in here because I'm going to stick them on the bottom and then use some of that hardcore, uh, hardcore silicone. Maybe I could put this one here and I'll silicone them to the chassis. All right, after I, this is the doubler, this is hooked up after I, after I, uh, bench test this to make sure it's working right. I'm going to because uh, one of the capacitors was in backwards, but it still checks okay. Heat shrink all of this and glue these down. I relocated. Uh, what it does is it comes from here, goes through this fuse over here, then it goes through the choke, which is right there. Then it comes out of the choke. Ingoing is yellow, outcoming is red. It comes over here to the the yoke socket, then from the yoke socket, it, it came down to this capacitor, and then it came over here. Uh, and this, this 100 microfarad right here after the choke was in here. I relay located it over here. I pulled this wire directly from here up to here. I'm gonna delete this wire, and then I'm gonna move this this wire here will pull out and move up here. I don't want to do too much near the yoke socket because there's a lot of high voltage pulses in this area and I don't want to try and re-engineer that. Check this out. Cool, huh? Um, yeah, all I got to do is this and then we'll bench test it. Okay, a little soldering 101. Um, you need to create a sound mechanical connection with the solder joint before you attempt to solder it. You can't just 
lay two wires on top of each other and put a blob of solder on them to hold them together. That's no good. Um, it's cool to cut the old part out and then solder the new one onto the old part's leads. I do that often. Uh, a lot of times it's safer than trying to pull it out of these solder pots and then overheating these resistors or cracking something but you need to j-hook it so you need to put a loop in it like that okay and then put it down on the old wire and crimp it with the dikes and then solder it all right let's power this thing up before i glue all this together before i silicone these down and heat shrink everything I went through and I J-hooked all these capacitors and resoldered them so they're good. You really have to create a solid mechanical connection before you solder it. Don't depend on the solder to structurally hold two things together. That does not fly. Um, all of these caps up here are the same thing that the solder, the wires are just laid next to each other and solder blob doing it. That's unacceptable. I don't know. You know, will they ever fail? I don't know, but they should really either be J-hooked or, or pulled all the way through the board. But let's not get into that right now. Let's, I got the horizontal output tube out. Let's see if we can create an explosion here. So here we got 320, this needs a new battery. So here we got 155 volts. Here we got 313 volts. My main thing here is I just want to make sure that I've got the polarity correct on all of these. Uh, here we've got 1 volt might need to look into that here we got 307 volts here here we have 124 volts uh, here we have 12 volts that's the cathode my battery's about ready to die here we have 249 volts okay and here we have 270 volts. That's good. At least I, I'm getting the doubled voltage and the polarity looks correct. Let's look at what the schematic says here. The schematic says 200 70 volts and I'm at 313. That's without the horizontal output tube, so there's no load. Uh, looks good. Let's seal it up. Uh, heat shrink everything and silicone them down and we'll come back this evening and give it a test run. Interesting that capacitor that only had one volt is the cathode bypass cap or the vertical out. So we might have some other problems here. Maybe I'll check a few of these pots and stuff while I got this apart. Man, it looks like somebody removed the vertical output transformer uh, and cut the leads here, here, and here. Man, you can't have that like that. This shit has got high voltage pulses on it. That will arc that plate of that tube, that's one of those do not measure. That's got massive. I got to do something with that. That That's, uh-uh.
products, portion control, color-coded containers. If your food fits in one of these containers, you can eat it. There's one for every type of food you like to eat. That means you can still eat them. All right. Up, just exactly the right portion every time. This is... They're microwave safe for quick serving. And dishwasher safe for... This is with the... Uh, yeah. This is with all the capacitors done right to figure out which. Every time. For the first time ever, I felt like I'm not dieting, I'm not struggling with food. You don't have to worry about how many calories you're consuming. Just eat according to the containers, and that's it. I lost 12 pounds and 5.5 inches in 21 days. There's a start here guide that walks you through the program step by step. It shows you which 30 minute workout to do each day. Plus, there's a place to set and track your goals. That's it. Simple. Pick up the phone and get the body you always wanted with the complete 21-day fix fitness and nutrition program, including all six easy-to-follow 30-minute workouts. Let me see if I can adjust this out with the vertical hold and linear, I mean, vertical linearity and uh, size. In fact, I'll just put the... Uh, I'll just put the uh, generator on it. So, what for you was the toughest part of the Alright, here's what it looks like now. You need this for Just you. with the electrolytics hooked up correctly. You. you do eight hours of work for your bosses. You go home to your son. You cook. 30 minutes out of your time is not going to hurt your mom. It's not going to hurt your boss. It's not going to hurt your son. It's one of those things when you're a single mom, you said it. Nobody's going to do it for you. And it is only 30 minutes. And you take that time for yourself and you don't have to feel guilty about it. And you get in there and you get the workouts done. You're using the containers. You're in the kitchen. And not only are you doing it for yourself, but you're showing your son the healthier way too. And I think that that's awesome. So are you continuing the program now? It's my religion now. It's like I'm Catholic and I'm fixer. So <laughs> Catholic with a 21 day Catholic fix. So I just really want to reiterate, if I could do it, seriously, if I could do it, single mom of seven year old, anybody, anybody and their mama could do it. There you go. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Give it up right on. All the people who come out here, and you may. Wilson is live in West Hollywood with the latest on the film's release. Alex? Okay, so for the buzzing, you want to tweak this one right here. Colleen, the film is expected to play at this theater behind me tomorrow. It's only playing on a tenth of the screens that Sony had originally. Uh, and you can tweak this one. one. But the fact that you can watch it at home and not at the theater is almost a 9 11 style attack on movie go. So it's this one right here. North Korea was behind the Sony hack. You want us to kill the leader of North Korea? <laughs> About 300 theaters are showing the film tomorrow. The former director of the National Counterterrorism. So these two. Threats of violence from North Korea. So you want to adjust the fine tuning and then minimize the buzz and then maximize the sound quality. They think just hashtag ABC7 Eyewitness. Meantime, North Korea continues to experience internet problems with seven outages reported in the last 48 hours. It's still unclear what is causing them. The U.S. government has fueled speculation by not denying responsibility. However, security experts say North Korea's internet infrastructure is so weak that amateurs or a simple glitch could be just as likely. If you're heading out of town for the holidays, be warned you may face trouble. Take a live look at LAX. So far, there haven't been any cancellations, but at last check, we did see a few delays. In other cities, hundreds of flights have been canceled. Thousands of people are expected to pass through LAX. They're already seeing parking structures filling up at the airport, and bad weather in other parts of the country could lead to flight problems locally. Unfortunately, there's some weather on the East Coast that may be impacting the folks who are trying to get out of LA today. Snow, wind, and we are seeing some impact as far as the East Coast right now. Not a lot of delays right now at LAX, but the later the day, the more delays. Whether you're flying or picking someone up from the airport, it's a good idea to check with the airline before you leave the house. Here right now at the coast, and it is a 68 Ontario, 59 Victorville, and Big Bear's at 46. Good evening to you, 60 Palmdale and 64 Oxnard. So the temperatures right now are above average where we normally would be, but we have a high wind warning in effect starting tonight. 
Your Christmas Eve turning into Christmas Day will be a windy one. Details on the gusty conditions and how cold it will get coming up in your full 7 day forecast in a few minutes. All right, Jonathan, thank you. You can get the latest weather and more right on your smartphone or tablet for free. There's the free ABC7 app for breaking news, live video, weather, and traffic. The ABC7 Mega Doppler weather app can give you the forecast for wherever you go. Use the ABC7 alarm clock. Nothing like a strong CRT, man. Look at that. With the free Watch ABC app. Go Crystal ABC7. clear. Apps. It's a gesture of help for a family devastated by a fire. As Eyewitness News reporter Robert Ogin found out, LAPD officers reached out with their hearts and into their pocketbooks books to help a family for the holidays. Alex Lopez walks us past what was his family's living room. This is where the couch was, the TV, and the, the Christmas tree was at that corner. He's here trying to salvage what he can in the wake of a devastating fire that destroyed this one-bedroom house where Alex lived with his wife and his three sons. I saw the flames from the outside. The fire on Monday night started in this patio. Investigators say an unattended candle may be to blame. Alex tried to douse the flames with a garden hose, but it was of little use. The hose was beginning to melt, and that's when I felt the, the burns in my hand. The fire hit just days before the Lopez family was preparing to host a family Christmas party. Police and fire responded quickly. Still, the Lopez family lost pretty much everything. I just want to make you realize that you're supporting. But today, Alex was presented with this envelope filled with hundreds of dollars, donations that were collected by the officers of the LAPD's Pacific Division. I think we all know that it's tragic for anything like this to happen to any family and then to compound it with the holiday season. Captain Nicole Alberica says her officers simply wanted to help a family in a time of need. This didn't come from an outside nonprofit. This came from our own officers, our own personnel. The LAPD's Pacific Station is right around the corner from the scene of the fire, and already officers here have collected donations from residents for the Lopez family. Uh, this incident has really uh, touched the hearts of people here on uh, Christmas. Alex says the generosity his family has received will help brighten what's been an otherwise bleak Christmas. The relief of what we've been through, yeah, it's, I think, I'm very thankful. Reporting from Mar Vista, Robert Mulgain, ABC7 Eyewitness News. In Atlanta, a lab technician at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is being monitored for possible exposure to Ebola. A CDC spokesperson says the technician may have accidentally come into contact with a small amount of the live virus. The material was on a sealed plate, but officials say it was improperly moved into the lab where the technician was working. Other workers have been notified. The technician will be monitored for 21 days. Hey, this thing looks good. I think this is ready to go home. Calm after a white officer fatally shot a black teenager who police say could probably get at the officer. Well, as ABC Susan Salney reports, the shooting comes on the heels of that deadly police involved shooting in nearby Ferguson. I don't know. Another burst of violence on the streets of suburban St. Louis last night and more discord between the community and the police. This time in the city of Berkeley, Missouri. Looks good to me. Just gathered at the spot where a white police officer fatally shot. You're going to need to adjust the AGC and all that, Berkeley, you know, for your TV and your signal source. At a gas station when he encountered two people, one of them police say pointed a gun at the officer. You know, whenever you're exposed to advertising in this country, you realize all over again that America's leading industry is still the manufacture, distribution, packaging, and marketing of bullshit. <laughs> High quality bullshit, world class designer bullshit, to be sure. Hospital tested, clinically proven bullshit, but bullshit nonetheless. Razor is a jigsaw, circular saw, band saw, tile saw, and hacksaw combined. Roto-Razor cuts horizontally or vertically. It cuts in a straight line, along a curved line, or plunge cuts a corner on a dime. You can even cut with it upside down. With Roto-Razor, you can rip it, cross-cut it, miter it, or trim it. Roto-Razor cuts new tile like magic without cracking and removes old tile and grout in seconds. Quality, value, style, service, selection, convenience, economy, savings, performance, experience, hospitality, low rates, friendly service, name brands, easy terms, affordable prices, money back guarantee. Inside is a 400 watt motor in a construction grade chassis that's durable, incredibly light and fits easily in the palm of any sized hand. 
There's a thumb control power switch on one side with a safety switch on the other that keeps the blade guard locked until you're ready to cut. And the blade guard adjusts so you can cut to the depth you want without damaging the surface below. And Roto Racer comes with three quick change razor sharp cutting blades. You get a tungsten carbide blade for wood, a high speed steel blade for metal, and a rock hard diamond blade for tile and stone. Whether you're a do it yourselfer or a professional contractor, if it's a home repair or a weekend woodworking project, if you're a tool guy cutting for a living or a first time user on an arts and crafts project, the Roto Racer is the fast and easy way to get the job done right the first time and every time. You'd spend a fortune for all of these power saws, but for a limited time only, you get the Roto Razor, including three cutting blades, all for just four easy payments of only $49.95. But limited time only, though, so act now, order today, send no money, offer good while supplies last, two to a customer, each item sold separately, batteries not included, mileage may vary. <laughs> All sales are final, allow six weeks for delivery, some items not available, some assembly required, some restrictions may apply. But wait, as part of this introductory special, we'll make the final payment for you. That's right, order in the next 20 minutes and you get the Roto Razor with over 3,400 RPMs of power for just three easy payments of only $49.95. No cash? No problem. <laughs> No kidding. No fuss, no muss, no risk, no obligation, no red tape, no hidden charges, no down payment, no entry fee, no purchase necessary. No one will call on you. No payments or interest till December. But we're just getting started. To help make cleanup a snap, we'll also include the handy dust removal attachment kit, a $30 value at no extra charge. Just attach the dust release valve to any vacuum, and now you're cutting clean with a powerful machine and without the mess. Plus, we'll also include the Roto Razor Contractor Storage Case. This durable construction grade case keeps your Roto Razor stored safe and secure. It's a $20 value. It's free too. And say, don't forget to pick up your free gift. A classic deluxe custom designer luxury prestige high quality premium select gourmet pocket flashlight. And, and if you act now, we'll include an extra added free complimentary bonus gift. A classic deluxe custom designer luxury prestige high quality premium select gourmet leather style wallet with detachable keychain and a pencil holder. It's our way of saying thank you. And we're not finished yet. Order right now and we'll also include this professional 310-piece contractor's drill bit set. The set comes complete with metal drill bits, masonry bits, wood bits, screwdriver bits, molly bolts, wall anchors, and more. Every bit for every job imaginable. 310 pieces in all, a $50 value, yours free. Just pay separate processing and handling. So... So come on in. Come on in for a free demonstration and a free consultation with our friendly professional staff. Our courteous and knowledgeable sales representatives will help you make a selection that's just right for you and just right for your budget. Call or go online right now to purchase your Roto Razor complete with three cutting blades, the dust removal kit, the contractor storage case, and the 310-piece drill bit set. A total value of over $300, all yours for just three easy payments of only $49.95. This is a risk-free offer because the Roto Razor comes with our exclusive one-year replacement warranty and our unconditional 30-day create-like-a-contractor money-back guarantee. And if you're not completely satisfied, you pay nothing. Simply return the unused portion for a full refund. No questions asked. It's our way of saying thank you. Use your Roto Razor for a full month. And if it's not the fastest, easiest, and most affordable way to give your home an extreme makeover, simply send it back for a full refund of the purchase price. But keep the 310 piece drill bit set as our gift to you for just trying Roto Razor. Keep your free gift. Actually, it's our way of saying bend over just a little further. <laughs> And let us stick this big dick into your ass a little bit deeper. You get it all for just three easy payments of just $49.95. Shop by mail, order by phone. Try it in your home. Get one for your car. Have your credit card ready and call the number on your screen. Or go online to order your Roto Racer right now.